Today, I'm going to show you 10 of my favorite Sherwin-Williams paint colors that can add some beautiful blue to your home. This shirt was not a coincidence, by the way. What I love about blue is it signifies calm and stability. And I'm an optimist, so when I get a case of the blues, I'm not sad. I'm just chilling. What's wonderful about the color blue is it's more than just its pure primary color form. There's so much nuance and such variety within blue paint colors, and that's what I wanted to show you today with my 10 favorite blues of 2022. I also want to recognize Mighty Boards for helping us out with today's video, which is appropriate because if you're considering any of these paint colors, I would strongly encourage you to test them out properly. Mighty Boards are our tester boards of choice because they're large and flexible, allowing you to get a lot of paint on them so you can get a true sense of the color before buying a full can of it, or two or three. Mighty Boards are available at many different locations throughout North America at various paint stores, and if your local store does not carry them, I would maybe have a chat with the owner because they're definitely missing out. When it comes to testing your paint colors out, be sure to go Mighty with Mighty Boards. I'll leave their information in the description down below and a big thank you for them for sponsoring today's video. So now that you know the importance of testing colors out, let's get into some paint colors themselves, starting with these four. These are the dark blues that I wanna go over because they're what most people think of when we say blue paint, even though we'll get into a lot of different variations later on. Piper blue is almost an exaggeration of blue because it's so saturated and vibrant and quite honestly, the opposite of calm and soothing because it's hyper, obviously. Kind of like me, I had a coffee earlier. This is a great place to start, I feel, because it's not necessarily being toned down with gray or shaded with black or even altered with strong green or purple undertones to change it up. If you just want blue, my recommendation is hyper blue. But if you did want a little more nuance in depth and perhaps a slight yellow warmth in the background, that's where loyal blue comes in. Not royal, loyal. We can already see a slight difference in undertones here because loyal blue does have a touch of yellow or more specifically green. It's also quite a bit darker, which gives it some added richness. I wouldn't say it's necessarily green enough to feel like a dark teal, but you may get that impression when you compare it to the last color we talked about. I love loyal blue next to dark woods. It's a bit of a nautical theme, I guess, maybe some pirate ship vibes, but they really work together very nicely. When we switch over to indigo batik, which is probably one of my favorite navy blues at the moment, you sort of see a color that's pretty different looking even though it's a dark blue as well. Because Indigo Batik, it gets rid of that green undertone and almost has a smoky purple undertone, which mainly comes from a bit of gray to tone down the saturation a tad. And that also means it's not quite as dark as Loyal Blue. That somewhat smoky quality makes it feel a little more versatile because it's not immensely dark. And it does have that very dark denim type of coloration that I really like. After the Storm is an interesting color because some people would not even recognize this as being blue, but it is. In fact, it's probably the darkest blue I've seen made by Sherwin-Williams. It's just about as dark as some black paint colors that have a light reflectance value of three. And so does this color. That means it literally only reflects 3% of the light that hits it and absorbs the rest. So when you use this color inside your home in those underlit environments, you may think it's black, but when you paint your garage door with it outside, on the other hand, that sunlight will really accentuate the blue undertone within it. So don't make the mistake by thinking that this color is black. It's just a super dark blue, but I think it's really cool for that reason. These three are my next three blues that I wanna talk about, and I would call them my nearly neutrals, two of which are much more neutral than the other, but all share that somewhat muted quality in varying degrees. Evening shadow is definitely the closest thing to a traditional gray on this list. I know there's gonna be some of you that are looking for a cool gray, and I really like this one. Depending on your interior lighting, this color can look a lot more blue, especially in north-facing rooms, but as far as saturation is concerned, Concerned, this one is the most mild. North Star brings in a little more of that 
powdery blue into the mix. So much so that I would say it's kind of gone beyond gray territory with the amount of blue in it. These two are definitely your starter blues of the list, especially if you're coming from a rather minimalist background of pastels and off-whites and neutrals. Aleutian is clearly the most saturated of the three, and it's been one of my favorite Sherwin-Williams blue paint colors for a little while now because it doesn't try to hide the fact that it's rich with color. It's one of those, again, denim blues, I would say, where you have that violet undertone lurking in the background, but I find it so intriguing. It's a color that really works nicely with a lot of the warmer neutrals that are becoming so popular these days in the forms of beige and cream and tan and all that goodness. But even with its saturation, it still has that ever so slight haziness that comes from a bit of dark gray to shade the color ever so slightly. I think it's beautiful. Maybe not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I just had to include it. Now, if we take Aleutian, the color we just talked about, and almost purify it and filter out all that hazy quality that I was talking about, you're pretty much left with Celestial, which is another one of those pretty blues that almost has a purple undertone underneath that surface. It's definitely more vibrant than Aleutian, which gives you a more dynamic looking color. Just make sure that it suits the rest of the room because it doesn't really have that muted aspect of Aleutian to settle it down. Next is Little Boy Blue, spelt B-L-U. They just dropped the E, interestingly enough. But really, I love this color because it feels like a robin's egg blue almost. It's pretty pale and it does have a little bit of green as well, but I do like its amount of saturation for such a light pastel color. And finally, the most exciting, fun accent color of this entire list to me is Fountain. This version of cyan is a bit of a showstopper color that would probably read as too much when you use it all over rooms, for example, unless it's a playroom or something that's supposed to feel really fun and energetic. I love this color in accent form, especially as an exterior color. Think of uh, a front door or maybe shutters, but probably just front door for me. Keep it nice and simple and just the one beautiful cyan turquoisey color. It is really dynamic and that touch of turquoise in the background really energizes the whole color. Honestly, I wish I had the guts to change up my dark brown front door, but alas, I do not. What was your favorite color today? Let me know down below and I'll see you in the next video.